Oh, I love these kids. They are ready. They love Jesus, and they trust him. Now the question is, how about the rest of you? Are you as ready to meet Jesus as they are? Let me ask you, how's your summer going? Have you had a good summer? Have you had any time this summer where you've had something unexpected happen and all of a sudden you thought about Jesus? I can tell you, I've had several experiences that have reminded me this summer that I need to be thinking about Jesus more. My wife and I were traveling down to Anna Marie Island, which is in Florida, and we were on four lanes of freeway going around Macon, Georgia. Right in front of me was a semi-truck. And all of a sudden, that semi-truck weaved. And right in my lane was a furnace that fell off the back of a pickup truck. Now, I'm going 65 mile an hour, and that furnace is right there. And I'm, I'm checking for stuff and hitting the brake and weaving. And fortunately, we, we got by it. And my wife kind of said, I think we just experienced a miracle. God was with us and made us stop and think about God's presence in our lives, Jesus being with us. Have you had any of those kind of things happen in your life? Where all of a sudden it seems like you're about ready to see Jesus face to face. Now, I want to get to this text, but also we need Scripture to help us to understand Scripture. So before we take a look at this text in Luke, let me take you to 2 Peter 3.8. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. Now think about that. In God's world, a thousand years are but a day. Hundred years, 2.4 hours. Fifty years, 1.2 hours, 25 years, 36 minutes, 10 years is a mere barely 15 minutes. Now think about your life from God's perspective. Do we have anybody here who's under 10? You under 10? Think about that. You're under 10. You think you'll live to be 110? And if you would live to be 110, from God's perspective, that's 2.4 hours. We have anybody here that's over 50? <laughs> uh, from God's perspective, you got an hour or so. OK, you with me? you realize all of a sudden, from God's perspective, our lives are flying by. Are we ready? And that's what our text is trying to do. Jesus is trying to help us understand that our lives are flying by. And things happen 
boom, so quickly. You know, as a pastor for 47 years, I've seen people on church on Sunday in bed to been at their deathbed on Monday. Life fleeting by. Are we ready to meet Jesus? Today's gospel, that's what Jesus warns his disciples about. To be dressed for action, to have those lamps lit, to be like those who are waiting for the master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Jesus then concludes this warning by saying, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. For some of us, it could be today. For others, next week. For others, not too far from now. Are we ready? Over the centuries, some people have taken this warning to interpret that true Christians are supposed to be prepared at every moment of their lives for the end of the world. Let me just say, I think we need to be prepared every moment for the end of our lives as opposed to the end of the world. Because when we talk about the end of the world, we say, oh, that's way out there. I'm not worried about the end of the world. That's thousands of years from now. But when we talk about my life, um, I'm 73, and from God's perspective, maybe I got another 15 minutes. That seems to be real close. This fellow over here has got it. Too close, right? Yeah. That seems a little too close for me. And is it possible that by waiting for something that's way out there, we miss Jesus' appearance along the way? It's so, so possible to to look for Jesus in heaven that we miss him here on earth. One of the great Lutheran doctrines is that by the help of the Holy Spirit, the Bible interprets itself. That's why I went back to Peter this morning. What that means is that other parts of the scripture inform you about the meaning of the particular passage that we're studying. In the case of today's gospel, Jesus is urging us to be prepared for his sudden and unexpected coming. In the Matthew account of this gospel, Jesus tells a story of the last judgment in which people who had spent their entire lives being good and waiting for him actually missed him when he appeared to them in their needy brothers and sisters. These fine religious folks were so busy waiting for the Lord that they failed to see him in their neighbors who were hungry and thirsty and unsheltered, falsely imprisoned and alienated from friends and family. If you look at today's gospel in in light of this passage from Matthew, and I believe we must, then it's obvious that the preparedness Jesus speaks about is preparedness for the possibility of his coming to us through every one of our neighbors. 
That means we must be alert not only for the great cosmic show at the end of time that will, that future event when Christ becomes obvious to the whole universe, we must be alert to all those times when Christ's presence occurs here and now. We must be alert to all the opportunities given us welcoming our neighbors to serve Christ by serving them. And we don't need to be afraid to do that. Jesus says in today's gospel, that is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And what is this kingdom that God the Father gives us? It is the kingdom of eternal companionship with Jesus. It is the kingdom of heaven on earth where caring for your neighbors is caring for Jesus. We're using your time and your energy, talents and treasures is an investment in eternity. We're giving your life away results in having life more fully than you could have imagined ever having. There used to be a, a little restaurant near the Ohio State University that had a tiny sign in the window. And I just happened to go by it one day. And it says in this tiny restaurant, it says the seating capacity is 3,000. But don't miss the small print. In the small print, it says 35 at a time. Faithful discipleship has to do with capacity, not just with the quantity alone. It has to do with our capacity for receiving all the gifts God gives us and then passing those gifts along to others. Our worth in the kingdom of God is not measured by what we have accumulated, but by what we have passed along to others. The paradox of Christian discipleship is that the more that we give away, the more God provides for us to give. It's, if you watch any of the uh, news programs that are showing a food distribution in a far off country like Africa, Somalia or something like that, um, oftentimes you'll see a line of people who are they're taking food off the truck and one person's handing it to another person, to another person, to another person, to another person. And the, and the food goes and is stacked and there, there are a group of people who are distributing that food to those people who are hungry. But you know, if anybody steps out of that line or if anybody fails to pass on what they had received, it doesn't get to where it needs to be to help the people who are hungry. So it is with the church and with all who follow Jesus. We are alert to Jesus' presence in the neighbors around us and we're ready to give to others what God has given to us. We support the mission, the mission of God in history by receiving and giving, receiving and giving, so that all of our brothers and sisters might experience the fullness of life in Christ. Now there's one more thing in this gospel for today. Jesus describes what happens when the servants welcome their master home from the wedding banquet. He said, blessed are those whom the master finds alert when he comes.
blessed are those. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat and he'll come and serve them. Just picture it. The servants are waiting for their master to return so they can serve him, but upon arrival, there is a reversal, and he serves them. That's exactly what happens at that communion table every Sunday when you celebrate communion. We serve Christ in our worship and through our hymns. We're ready to receive him. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you. The mystery is reversed. Christ, whom we had prepared to serve, suddenly invites us to be served by him. It's a strange turn of events that our master becomes our servant and only those who are present and alert are able to receive the incredible, paradoxical blessedness that Christ gives us in this sacrament. That is what Holy Communion is all about. It is a foretaste of the feast to come. It is a brief glimpse of the treasures of heaven which is laid up for all who dare to see Jesus in their neighbors here and now and in their lives and among those who are all around them. In God's word, the love of God that we receive through Jesus is amazing. Are we ready? Are we alert? Do we understand how rapidly life is passing us by and how important it is that we think about Jesus on a regular basis, remember what he's done for us, and participate, join him in sharing the blessings of the Father with loved ones, neighbors, and friends, and beyond. All in the name of Jesus. Amen.